can wait. Lion King, hop on and hang on to your transistors. Welcome back to the Tiger Room Hanger. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about the Fans Toys FD54 Warthog. It's their take on a very G1-esque power glide. And it is a pretty good looking figure. Overall, it's bigger than I thought it would be for a minibot, which kind of explains the little bit higher price for a minibot. But I did get this as shows you. I have a link down below where you can get yours. But I gotta say, it's a good figure. I'm gonna talk about the good and the bad. The transformation seems like older, old school fans toys for whatever reason. It's just a little bit too overly complex. But I'll let Dre say it, because it's like the old school version. Yeah, I think that's said right. Let's go ahead and get into talking about fans toys. Warthog. All right, here's the box packaging. Very uh, fans toys esque type of packaging. And there's the product on the back. Looks pretty good. Feature and all that fun stuff. I'm gonna take a look at it. And yeah, not not too big of a box. It's a little bit bigger than the uh, well, definitely bigger than the average mini bot box. All right, so right out of the box, he is a very well-painted, nice-looking figure, which all the paint scares me for doing any of his functions and features and any of that stuff with him. But I haven't really scratched or chipped any yet, but it is a little bit daunting and ominous to do any of this stuff that could possibly chip the paint. So with that, though, it's a very nice-looking figure. The only, thing, the only thing I really have a complaint about is the feet. I think the feet are just a little too big. I also think that they didn't do the feet really all that well on the Richtofen, but when we do the comparison side by side, you can see about the feet. And other than that, I think he looks pretty good. The lower legs do look a bit like you're slapping a whole lot of layers of kibble. It's like an onion. He's got onion lower legs because you've got multiple layers wrapped around it. So that's just kind of how that looks. But, but he is pretty clean front and back overall, aside from some onion legs and some giant feet. But a good looking power glide and definitely I've had a problem with like most of the Hasbro power glides aside from the legends that they made finally started looking pretty good I think they got probably another one coming but this one here really gives you that look of power glide that that very G1-esque look which is what Fans Toys does and Fans Toys does well but another problem I don't really want to talk about problems but uh, every single aspect of this is tight everything everything's real tight such as trying to get this open, which we will in a bit, the, moving the face for the different things you have to move the face for. Uh, it's tight. It's just really a, a tight situation. But we'll make it all work, and let's get into looking at accessories real quick. There's his gun, and his gun is painted, which is why it comes in like wrapped in paper. So it doesn't chip. So they're very aware that their paint could not easily chip if something went wrong. Then he also comes with, accessory-wise, he comes with these stands so here's one stand that uh well it's not a stand it's a stand adapter and it plugs into the back here headed backwards so and then it would clip onto one of the various stands i'm not even sure which stand you'd put it on but uh stand adapter no stand uh, i don't know i'm not going to be using it on a stand of course you get the stand adapter for when it's in the alt mode and then there's this guy so let's put this on now what you do is this this took me a while the first time to move that head around, but you move the head around. I, th I find it a little easier if you can open the back of it, open the back of this, because I think it sort of rubs against that piece, and then you can try to move it. And I, I hate to say it, but I couldn't move the face without a spudger. So um, without a spudger, maybe if you push it from behind, it's easier. I mean, it's just not, for me, for mine, it's really tight, and it's really Kind of hard to move so you do that then you put the face on it all right so putting this on the face then there it is and you know he's got the whole a hoist goes hollywood look and it's obligatory at this point but you can do the whole scene i don't know very many people that do display it like that but it'd be fun for like photography for a one-time deal all right so putting all those parts back in the box i'm not going to use them and uh don't want to lose them in case looking at the articulation the head side to side a little bit up and down but not much you've got the shoulder going out to here arm going out to there and then 360 and then bicep swivel double 
double joint doesn't get you too much. You've got the, it's a solid finger and then the, I, which I guess typewriter kind of fingers right there. And then this, this does peg back into the slot there. Real simple stuff that I didn't really need to go over. Side to side, ab crunch. So that's been a contention on the weight swivel and the ab crunch. Uh, we got old school flaps. So up, out to the side, uh, thigh swivel. You've got, well, it goes past, it's a double joint. So it will go past the 90. And then you have more articulation. You got the thigh and the knee, mostly because of the transformation, but we'll take it. And then uh, down the feet, they do a whole lot. Uh, be very careful with the feet. Let's just let's just put it like this. Be very, very careful with the feet. I've heard, I've been warned about the feet and the hips so far on this guy. So I'm gonna be taking it really careful with the feet and the hips and not going too extreme. So you've got the posability that you would need, I think, for a power glide. So here he is next to the DX9, and I I was always thinking in my mind that the DX9 and this were about the same height. This thing is way taller, and I was surprised to see that but I'm kind of happy to see that, I kind of like it. I like the red better on the fans' toys, but uh, the DX9 still doesn't look bad. I mean, I don't think it looks horrible, definitely. Uh, not that it's outdated or just really bad looking, but this has gone in a little bit better direction. As much uh, crap as I give the onion legs, it does look a little bit better than just kind of saddling it the way the DX9 did it. So so I do think that, that they're both great options. They both look good but I kind of like the fans toys route a little bit better, but the transformation is a lot more fun on this guy. Well, I don't know if you call it fun, but it's less of a chore than this thing is going to be. But anyhow, that's them side by side. So I do like the fans toys one better. Do I, I like it like twice the price kind of better. I don't know. And next to their cliff jumper. That's pretty awesome. That's a, uh... Another mini bot. This thing towers over mini bots. It's really big. Here he is next to Magic Squares, Optimus Prime. So he's not too big. Definitely not too big. I, these mini bots, I know they need to be smaller, and so I'm fine with this size. And I actually think that this the scale works really well. Speaking of scale, this is next to a G1. This is past and present. What will the future hold for Powerglide? Who knows? Next to G1. All right, so getting into the transformation, we are going to do a handful of things with this guy to prep them. Uh, and I've already kind of popped this back piece open so that we can uh, close the face. So we want to do that. And I'm going to push it from the back to close off the face. That's uh, helpful there. We're going to need this. Then you're going to swing this back piece around to make it flat and flush back of the back of the or tip of it. It's the back of the head. Now it's going to be the tip of the nose cone and all that kind of stuff. Then we're going to need to take these panels and flatten them out. And then we're going to start with this arm. And uh, what we do is undo this tab. And then we are going to fold this up, bring this whole section here out and then fold the hand in like we've done so many more times in the past. Then it gets kind of wild and crazy how all this folds up. Just kind of want to get this properly positioned. You're going to fold this down on itself. Like that and then collapse it, and then clean it up to the best of my ability. And then we're going to tab it in to here. There's a slot to tab that in. So quite interesting. And we're going to do that all again on the other side. And I don't know if I should do, you know, mirror it, do it like that, but I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side on this one. And bring the arm out, fold this in. Lots of work. 
and bring that up, fold this around, collapse that in on itself, close that piece there, and then tab it in. So now we've got the other side going with it. We are going to separate this section here and the best way would be to disconnect that and then fold it up so that would unfurl all of this and then slide on the sliding mechanism and then we're going to show it from the back here we're going to fold this mechanism out and then we're really just creating the wing at this point now this is where i think it's really intelligent that they you pop this up, you flip this around, and then it clips into place. Now that is that is like sort of ingenious. That that's going to clip onto this. It's all going to line up just right. And yeah, I guess you can't tab that wing in until this is clipped in. So that is kind of one of those things that uh, you've got to go in order for that. So, but that's a lot going on for one wing, and then comes down and to kind of get it into place there pretty impressive like engineering wise not impressive fun wise so we'll try to do the other side here so we can untab untab this and then untab the wing from the whole mechanism which this one's oddly enough not wanting to come untabbed i hate that i have to use a spudger on transformations these days i used to never ever use a spudger ever just the fingernails, lift it up, pull it out, unfurl it, bring it around to the back, and then slide it up, and then rotate all that out. But I guess leave it out until we do the special moment here. And let's uh, kind of get that cleaned up. All right, so this thing needs to fold that out, come out and around, tab in. And I like to look at it while it's tabbing in, make sure Everything is slid just right. Okay. That one was giving me a little bit more trouble than the first one. And then this came out of position, which is not a big deal. Okay. So now we are getting into needing to work on the head. Okay. So we are going to make sure that we've got all this stuff out of the way as best we can and so we're gonna grab this and pull it up and it's coming out of there and as you can see you can see what we're working on here and what's uh, gonna happen with it but all right so pulling this down is gonna give you some clearance to open this up to get this out and uh, and to make you feel better, this is the easy part. <laughs> okay, so then we have to have all this adjusted more or less just right so that we can fold this out all the way. This comes out and tabs into the face. This adjusts back into the cockpit, cockpital area. And Yep, yeah, that's all that's going on. Pretty good. So, then we're going to tighten all this up. I mean, it's it's smart engineering. It's just not something that you you need to dedicate your Saturday afternoon for a transformation of this guy, that's for sure. No, dedicate a Tuesday morning to it. <laughs> all right. Now we're getting down into the rest of this fun stuff. So, we got a lot more going on. Uh, we've, we've, we've done the easy part, so celebrate the easy part being done and get all this out of the way. Now to, I was warned about these hips and they are tight. So you want to grab the ball joint itself and firmly, but not too firmly undo it. That one came down kind of easy. Maybe I should do it the same with the same hand. Okay, that is very tight. Very, very tight. So I was able to do it on the other side really easy in comparison to what's going on with this side. So 
kind of an issue. Definitely don't want to break it. Wonder if it'll just help with a nice little shove. If you got one, shove it from the other side. Is that how it's gonna work? It's not working that way. All right, I loosened these screws and it gave. Uh, I've had a couple people warn me about this and the ankles, so I am taking it easy. This and the ankles. I mean, we're not buying a Hasbro figure, we're buying a higher end masterpiece transformer that was way too hard. Way too hard. So at this point, we want to pigeon toe these, more or less, to get that. I think that's the right positioning for it. So we are going to start moving some stuff down and into position. These need to come down into here. That'll help make it look more like a plane and as other stuff's falling apart, we'll have to tighten up later. Okay, so let's solidify this upper part so that we can start uh, with these lower legs and it's not flopping around so much. So we are going to slide this here. This needs to be down all the way so that it has the clearance to slide in and tab in and then all this is going to clean up this we can go back and re-clean that up later but then we are going to get into these lower legs and basically pull on all right so all this stuff is going to more or less open up so let's go ahead and undo all of this open it up and then we're going to flip this around. And what we're doing essentially is making this. Okay, let's get it where it's proper here. here. Let's get it like this. There, that feels right. So the whole point of it is that the engine is going to be held in place by this die cast piece right here. And so that's what this whole point of this is. And then that's coming up. Then we're going to manipulate this piece here to make the rest of it. So flip it around. No, oh, that was I had it right the first time. Not really. Long piece going up to here. Okay, now, see this transformation can get a little confusing because there's a lot going on, so, and hard to get on camera sometimes, so. This piece here is going to go into there. Like that. And this is gonna all flatten out. This is going to make the the end of it. But let's uh, let's get this other side done. And so I'm gonna do the other side off camera just to shorten this up because this is taking way too long. But let's go ahead and do this foot down here. Start with this tab, and then we go to this tab, and then it's gonna come out now. So what we're doing is forming the. Some of this stuff is kind of ingenious on how they did it. But uh, we've got that formed. This comes out and forms that piece. And then this will extend and this forms this and it gives you the landing gear. So it's a lot going on. It is definitely a lot going on with this all at once. And so I'm going to, we've got this side oh, it backed out, but I, we got this side. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other side off camera and then we'll put it together. But this is definitely, definitely gonna look good when we're done. I'm having a hard time keeping this thing in frame. And so <laughs> I'm refilming this because it did not look right. There's a couple of scenes that I just go way off frame, but you're, you're gonna get in here and you're gonna tighten all this, you're gonna tab all this stuff together. There are, uh, that came undone, but tabs all through this. Having to go back and retro, retro transform this so 
But I want to point out that this, getting all this angled just right is really hard with all of this. You're just moving so many things in so many different angles that it is uh, quite a challenge. But you just have to fiddle with it. Tab it in here, tab it in here, tab it together right here. And uh, and yeah, that's so there's a little bit of gappiness even if even if you get it all just right, there's still gonna be a level of gappiness to this. And then you're gonna have to finesse and work all of this stuff here on the tail end of it. So that's a challenge for getting it together. Mike, get it together, but anyway. Uh, well, taking it apart and fiddling it with a little bit more made it look a little bit better than you're going to see in the rest of this video, but this is just refilming a shot that I did not like. <laughs> All right, here it is, a marvel of modern day engineering. This really was quite crazy of a transformation. I don't think I have everything aligned exactly right, but I'm done. That's as much as I'm going to do with it, but... I still think it looks pretty good. Like you look straight down the center, got some kind of gappiness here and here. I'm sure if I mess with that a little bit longer, I can get rid of it. But um, I already told you what I thought the problem was. But anyhow, maybe I'm wrong on why there's a little bit of gappiness in the tail end. But aside from that, it's it's huge. It's huge. It takes up almost this whole review space area, and it goes from mini bot to this. It's big. Now that is, it's like half wings and half long cylinder but it's still impressive that they did it and it's big and it looks really good and it looks very true to form i believe looks really nice so uh with that is it worth the time and effort to go through the transformation if you're gonna just play for a while i don't think if you're gonna flip it right back it's really worth the time but uh looking at the bottom here uh, it's pretty clean on the bottom too aside from of course i can't quite get everything tabbed in just right if i spend another 10 or 15 minutes i'm sure i can get it i, I don't really care that much uh you can plug in the gun there and uh yeah yeah pretty clean looks good really it it is a little plain in this mode because it's just all red and you do have some silver highlights to the engines right there which is nice you do have four landing gear which they pre-planned it and my landing gear aren't all touching at the same time, so I don't know what's going on with that, but it rolls. Still, it's pretty cool, it's pretty interesting, and it's one that, well, let's do a comparison to a G1. It absolutely, absolutely destroys the G1 in size and scale. It's just so much bigger than a G1, just wow. So much bigger than any other Richtofen out there. Now, they did make one that's probably about this size back in like, I don't, I don't even know what era it was, but they made a big one, but it didn't look G1-esque, and so it was sort of stylized, but with this, this is very, very G1 and gives us kind of what we need and want and crave. Next, next to Hot Rod, then next to, let's see what else we got here, Spindrift 2.0, let's try again, another Spindrift, and then MMC, and there's Sphinx. It just dawns on me that I forgot to show the chest gimmick where you can see that Paraglide has a heart. And I don't know if this was intentional or just a happenstance, but you can actually still do it in alt mode. You can see that Paraglide has a heart in alt mode too. So that's cool. That works. That's good. But happy omission. That was really hard to open the first time. I thought I was going to chip some paint. All right, so that's my look at the Fansoys Paraglide. It's pretty impressive how it turns into a giant airplane, a uh, big old airplane. It looks quite realistic, but it's a chore to get there, but it looks really good. I like this figure. I think that it's the best looking Paraglide on the market. Uh, maybe not the most fun to transform, but I do like the paint. I do like the red. I do like the size. I do like the scale. And I think the Fansoys did a good job with this. Wish they would mostly go back to simplification like they did with the aerial bots. But anyway, uh, I did get this at Shosie. I'm going to have a link down below where you can get yours. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this guy in the comments below. Tidarium Hanger out. Affirmative. You and Power Glide are heading directly toward the strange energy waves Teletran 1 detected. Watch me! Pull out, you
You're gonna hit the energy waves! Let's see how big, mean, and gruesome light seal power glide pow! You okay, little bug buddy? Yeah. Now, let's pull out the stops and try a little aerial tipsickery! A little what? Please! <laughs> 